All right, welcome to MSC 201. Uh, this is going to be our first uh, asynchronous lecture. And in this set of, uh, in this period, we're gonna talk about atomic structure and interatomic bonding. So this will be lecture one, and this first module will be on the atomic structure. All right, and we care about um, the atomic structure Let's get sort of that out of the way first. Like, why why do we care about this? Um, we care about it because material properties are dictated by this atomic structure. So, uh, what type of material we have, what properties that material has, are determined by these atomic structures. Uh, in particular, the valence electrons, will, which we'll get to uh, in a little bit. So, whether something is strong weak, whether something is brittle or ductile, whether something is a conductor or an insulator of uh, electrons, whether something is transparent uh, or more opaque. All of these are properties that start with the atomic structure of an atom. And so we need to know um, the types of atoms that are present. So do we have copper? Do we have carbon? Uh, what, do we, uh, what types of atoms? We also need to know the types of bonds between those atoms. And uh, in the next section, we'll talk about the packing of those atoms, which will still uh, come back to this atomic structure. All right, so this might be review, but I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So let's look at the basics of atomic structure. So hopefully everybody knows, and, and this is kind of a general schematic of an, uh, an atom, uh, but we have uh, the atom is composed of a nucleus. That nucleus is here in the middle, uh, has protons and neutrons. Um, both of those have a mass as defined here. Um, and then we have electrons orbiting that nucleus. So that uh, nu nucleus is positively charged from the protons, and then the neutrons obviously have no charge, whereas the electrons have negative charge, and they're much lighter, as you can kind of see here. Even though the units are kilograms, you can see that the order of magnitude is four times different. So electrons are much lighter, and they're flying around the, the nucleus. So an, an atom's atomic number uh, is uh, usually a term we call capital Z, as you can see here. Uh, is defined as the number of protons and the number, uh, or, sorry, number of protons or the number of electrons of the neutral species. So this should be the same. The mass, the atomic mass, uh, here we're going to define that as A, um, is defined as the mass of the protons plus neutrons. And if you're asking yourself where are the electrons, well, again, keep in mind that the electrons are so much uh, less mass, they don't really account uh, for enough to affect the mass. So they're not included in that uh, weight. And this is in, um, in an isotope. So uh, different isotopes will have different numbers of neutrons. The, uh, the weight, so this is something that you're maybe familiar with seeing uh, on the periodic table, the atomic weight, um, this is the masses uh, of the various isotopes, but it's the average. So it's a weighted average. So um, something like copper or iron or whatever that uh, uh, carbon, uh, when we have carbon in nature, uh, it's going to have a, um, a variety of different isotopes, usually one predominant one and then other minor ones. And so a real sample of carbon is slightly different based on the weighted average of the different isotopes because each will have different numbers of neutrons, as we can see here. So this is the number you're going to typically see, and it's going to be slightly different than um, the atomic number you can expect um, from, from doing those calculations. And when you see those units, um, you might see uh, uh, AMU, which is atomic mass unit, uh, per atom, and that's equivalent to grams per mole, something you probably went over in a basic chemistry class. All right, so now let's kind of get a rudimentary picture of what the atom looks like and, and where things are at. And for that, we go to the Bohr model, uh, named after the scientist uh, Bohr, who came up with this, this model. So this is a very generic um, 
picture of what it is. And so you can rudimentarily see kind of this, you know, we have a nu uh, nucleus in the middle and then uh, electrons orbiting. And what we see here is that these electrons are very discrete uh, levels from the nucleus, right? It's in this circle. And so it's a very specific radii from the nucleus. And so these discrete orbitals are what give that Bohr model its, uh, its appearance. But these discrete orbitals mean that the electrons um, are quantized. They're very specific uh, energy levels. And those levels are defined by four quantum numbers. And so we're not going to go into great detail here, but basically we have the principal uh, quantum number n, which is the main one that we're going to talk about. And so that's basically uh, integers 1, 2, 3, etc. You might often see them by these des designations here, uh, but those talk about the distance from the nucleus. And then you have others, uh, L, which is uh, defines the or various orbitals. Uh, you have M sub L, which is the magnetic quantum number, and then M sub S spin number. All of these define the energy level of a, uh, a single uh, electron in this structure. All right, so again, just kind of to rehash what I just talked about. So N is the principal quantum number. This gives you the shell, so the um, the the various radii here from uh, the, the nucleus. And then that L, uh, in the book we call it the absumnal uh, quantum number, but this also kind of uh, tells us about what we call subshells uh, or orbitals um, in the uh, structure. And then we have the magnetic quantum number. This gives us the amount of orbitals we have in each subshell. And then the spin quantum number accounts for the fact that each orbital will have not one, but two electrons. So this is basically sometimes referred to as, uh, here is one half, you see one half, negative one half. So spin up, spin down is sometimes what you, what you see with those. Okay, so the Bohr atom kind of gives us a, a good first approximation uh, of what's happening. You know, we have these very discrete uh, energy levels as you see here, right? Here's an electron at a very specific place from the nucleus. But in actuality, and so that would give us something like this, uh, where we have a, a picture of this atom. But in actuality, instead of a very discrete level, there's actually a range over which um, the electron will be found. And it's most probable in that position we have, that circle. But you can also find it elsewhere, which is uh, sort of represented by these dots. And so what this tells us is that we don't know the exact position. This is just the most probable position is the circle, but it can be a range uh, of positions over here. And so what we actually get is something that looks more like this, a little bit messier of this presentation, but it gives us the uh, probability density of where an electron will be. And it's not always exactly at that number.